Hello, I'm Mr. Eck, and today we're going to take a look at direct and inverse variation. So often in a math problem, you're going to have two quantities that change with each other. As one quantity goes up, the other quantity also goes up. You're probably familiar with this idea if you've studied lines. For example, the line y equals 3x is already an example of what we're going to call direct variation. As x goes up, y also goes up. So uh, this line also has the three components of direct variation already in, in it. There's always going to be a variable. And this is, think about this as the input variable. There's going to be another variable that you can think of as the output variable or uh, dependent variable. And usually there's going to be some third number, uh, a constant, attached to the input variable that affects how those two variables interact. Uh, so that x is not directly, like, literally equal to y, it's usually just proportional to that y value. So the general format for direct variation relationships is going to be the format y equals kx where k is the variable letter we usually use for that constant. Um, you can use any letter for all of these. Uh, often it's not y and x, it's just different letters. Uh, sometimes this thing is called the constant of proportionality. Uh, because the idea is that those two uh, variables are proportional to each other as one grows, the others grow. Uh, and so that constant relates how those things are growing together. All right, so let's do an example problem involving direct variation. Um, let's say that my level in a video game varies directly with the number of monsters that I defeat. And I played the game enough to know that if I killed 90 monsters, I reached level 15. Uh, write a model that relates the monsters killed M to my level L. So if it varies directly, then I know that um, my level depends on some constant times the number of monsters I kill. So that's the base uh, setup for this proportion. Then let's plug in the numbers. If I said I killed 90 monsters, I would reach level 15. Now to finish this model, we have to solve for the constant of proportionality. So we'll say that K is 15 divided by 90. So we'll treat it like an equation, uh, solve on both sides. 15 over 90 reduces down as a fraction. Uh, so it turns out that our constant of proportionality is 1 sixth, uh, so that's k. So then I can write the model uh, and say that my level will be 1 sixth times the number of monsters that I have killed. So that's one example of direct variation or direct proportionality. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, say that in the same game, uh, the developer has changed it. They've patched it so that you now get extra experience for defeating more enemies in a row. So let's say now uh, that the patch notes read that L varies directly with the square of M. So here's the model that I would write. I would write L equals, equals K times M squared. So that's something that shows up here in this uh, direct and inverse proportionality. Also is sometimes you have variables or sometimes you have exponents on one or the other variable. Uh, so k times m squared. Excuse. And if they'd given us a, a specific number of monsters and levels, we could then take that same idea and solve for k. I'm not going to do it here just for the interest of time. Uh, let's look at another real-world example. So in the game League of Legends, uh, and many other games, you often look at a stat called the uh, KD ratio. It stands for kills to deaths ratio. Uh, and it's defined as KDR is the number of kills that you make uh, in this game, divided by the number of deaths the times that you are killed. So if you're a good player, you have a higher KDR. If you're a worse player like me, you have a much lower KDR. Um, and yes, guys, I know, uh, especially you support players, that in League of Legends you really measure kills plus assists divided by your deaths. Uh, but just for the mathematical simplicity, we're going to go with uh, KD, kills and deaths only. Uh, so if we look at this, you might uh, make two observations from this formula. You know, you have uh, KDR, changes with your K and also uh, with 
your number of deaths. So we would say that KDR varies directly, oh, excuse me, varies directly with uh, the K variable because K is on top. As K increases, your KDR will increase. But if we think about what's going on with D, uh, as D increases, the number of deaths increases, your KDR, kill death ratio, would actually decrease. Uh, and so we have another term for that. We say that KDR varies inversely with D. And this is our first example of inverse variation. So the general idea of inverse variation is that if you have Y, it's equal to uh, K times one over X. So as X increases, one over X gets smaller and your Y value also gets smaller. Here's some other formats you'll see this in. Uh, you might see this as Y equals K divided by X. Again, K is just a constant here. K is, K is a constant. Um, so it's not a variable. Uh, so we have Y equals K over X. And another way you'll see this is cross multiplying or not cross multiplying, uh, multiplying both sides by X. So sometimes you see this formatted as X Y equals K. That is, as one goes up to maintain, the way to think about this is to maintain constant value K, as X goes up, Y would have to go down. Or as if Y were to go up, X would have to go down for this K value to remain constant. So that's another way to think about um, that proportionality. All right, so one more example here. Uh, it's early in the morning, so I have one thing on my mind and it's really going back to sleep. Uh, we'll say my desire to take a nap measured in an imaginary unit called sleeps varies inversely with the amount of coffee that I drink measured in cups of coffee. Uh, I noticed from experience that if I drink two cups of coffee, I experience six units of sleep, whatever that means. Uh, so I want to know how many units of sleep will I experience if I drink 10 cups of coffee? So how would I set this up? I would say that S, ooh, S, my unit of sleeps, is equal to K divided by my variable, uh, which in this case is C for cups of coffee. So K is that constant of proportionality. C is the number of cups of coffee I drink. And then let's plug in some numbers. I noticed, I wrote that if I had two cups of coffee, I had six sleeps, so I'd write six equals K over C, K over two, which if I cross solve around, that means that 12 would have to equal the K value. So the model that I could make uh, is S equals 12 divided by C. Uh, so then if that's my model, then since uh, I can find the number of sleeps, if I drink 10 cups of coffee by doing 12 divided by 10, which ends up being about 1.2, so I would experience 1.2 units of sleep, however that's measured. And again, that's just a made-up problem. I don't know, the units don't necessarily make sense there, uh, but that's how you would do an inverse variation problem. Uh, let's look at another example from the world of physics. So this is a real equation for the force of gravity. Uh, if you've taken a physics class or you're planning on taking a physics class, you're gonna see this one a lot when you're looking at uh, anything involving two masses, and like planets or uh, you and the Earth are an example of two masses, and every two masses exert a force of gravity on each other. Uh, so that force of gravity is equal to g, some gravitational constant, which is just a number. So this is kind of like that number k that we've been thinking about. Uh, that's like our k value. Uh, and then it's equal to m, sometimes this is called m1, and the other mass is m2, so there's two masses, and then it's divided by r squared. So what would we say about this model in terms of proportionality? Well, we would say that f is, oh, excuse me, I'm having pen issues, we're gonna make it through this video, but I'm not gonna write very much. f is directly proportional to mass one and mass two, but we would say that f is inversely proportional to the square of the uh, radius, the square of the distance between the objects. So you can be directly proportional to one or more variables and also inversely proportional to another one. 
Um, and then all of those different things, instead of having, you know, there's three variables here, but instead of having three different K values, all of those different K values kind of get rolled into that single um, M, the single G value, uh, that constant of gravitational proportion. So um, you don't have to have three different K values, but if you wanted to solve for one of these masses, you would need to know uh, either the force of gravity or the other two masses. Uh, you need to know three of the four variables to find the missing last one, as well as that constant. Uh, and if you do take a science class or a physics class, you're going to see a ton of equations like this. You know, anytime you have multiple variables related, um, you know, like for example, um, in electricity, we have watts equals volts times amps. The, I always call that the West Virginia formula. And so if you have that relationship between watts, volts, and amps, uh, you could talk about which two are directly related versus inversely related uh, or, or something like that. Or if you have even good old distance equals rate times time. Uh, you could talk about, you know, the relationship between the variables in terms of direct and inverse also. So that's like another situation where you see these. Um, finally, another situation you see these guys is in uh, SAT and AP Calc exams. Um, in AP Calc, there's a lot of word problems, and sometimes the problems don't give you an equation, and they set it up uh, with some kind of wording uh, often similar to, you know, how I worded the problems above, uh, where they just say something is defined uh, varies directly or directly with the square. Um, and then you have to set up the equation and then analyze it and do some calculus to it. Uh, it's also a favorite of ACT and SAT problem writers, just because it's an, you know something you could put into a word problem, uh, which they love, and kids have to read it, but then when you actually sit down and solve it, it's not that difficult. So it kind of makes a perfect standardized test problem because it doesn't take too long. You can do it in a minute if you know what they're talking about. Uh, and now, of course, you guys do. So just to recap, uh, direct variation is the first kind. Another way you'll see that talked about is something saying uh, it's directly proportional to or is proportional to. Uh, and that's something of the relationship y equals k times x. So k is some constant, y and x are your variables. Sorry about my pen here. I do not know what's wrong. Um, you can also have something like directly proportional to the square of where you have a relationship like y equals k times x squared. Uh, same idea. You, you can still solve for that k value. And then you can also run into this inverse variation. Uh, we would say uh, there's a lot of different ways to talk about that. Either inverse variation. You might hear that things are inversely proportional. You might hear that they vary inversely. And you might also see this word varies indirectly, which is the opposite, I guess, of direct variation. So varies uh, directly or indirectly. And the general equation for that is y equals k times 1 over x or y equals k over x. And so those are the three situations you're going to see. I hope you've all enjoyed watching this video. Please feel free to share it with your friends. Subscribe to my channel for future updates. If you are my student, uh, I'll also post links to the, this video and future videos in our uh, Google Drive and in our Google Classroom. You all have been watching ECMath, and I'll see you all next time.